Sania is offering a solution to help challenges facing Pakistan through a feasible, effective, and affordable reform paradigm. It, it boldly diagnoses the maladies of Pakistan's health system as ranging from governance challenges, low public investment, weak intersectional action, and poor performance. She clearly outlines that health would stand tall in a situation where social policies and plans are comprehensive and health is placed at the center of the development process. The book gives us the realization that much of the scope of public health is conventionally placed outside the medical domain, exemplified by the provision of safe drinking water, solid waste disposal, food safety and security, occupational and environmental health, housing conditions, and of course, the overarching poverty levels and growing inequities existing between rural and urban populations, as well as the natural and man-made disasters. The book amply addresses the mixed health system of Pakistan and, and, the diversif and its diversified efforts made to expand the public-private partnership in the service delivery paradigm, including the recent lessons of outsourcing and the prospects of prospects to pursue a model that entails better results in public health. In this broad analysis, the book clearly and rightly assigns the government as the principal custodian of public health and renders it accountable in providing essential life-saving services to the nation. Moreover, the book does not stop at providing this deep analysis about the state of public health in Pakistan and stipulating the responsibility of the state, it has made a splendid attempt to repair what this has metaphorically labeled as chalk pipes. In this regard, she has put forward an important reform agenda for consideration and action outlining the prevalence, the relevance of the following strategic roadmap. Number one, a wider participatory role for all stakeholders, embracing the right approach for health service delivery by enhancing individual and community access to affordable and quality care as the underlying prospects of health development. Two, addressing the broader constraints related to political economy and the ability to create a fiscal space for wider national social accountability and investment. Three, a call for widening public health financing and social protection coupled with a sound and strategic private health care approach to the delivery of health services with universal, equitable access and equitable access to promotive, preventive, curative, and rehabilitative services. Fourth, the building of institutional mechanisms to harness the regulatory approaches that enable the public to access the non-state providers and create a locally designed outsourcing mechanism that are accountable to the health system and capable to providing health for all and achieving health MDGs. And a call for the strategic use of technology, including medicines, where the WHO has laid down clear policies consistent with those proposed in the book. In our region of the WHO, the same life-saving essential medicine may have cost may, may, may have a cost that is 400 percent higher than a similar identical medicine in another country. This results from the intricate interplay of drug companies and their untempered greed at times, and because of the high government taxation. The use of generic medicines with tested quality and known price ceilings provide a liable solution to this global problem. The suboptimal efficiency of approximate, appropriate technology, such as the EPI cold chain systems, <coughs> transparent and accountable procurement and proper management and health information systems for evidence-based decision-making are some of the gray areas projected in the book. Dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the virtual commends the work of Dr. Sanya Nistar and recognizes her as one of the luminaries in global public health. The clarity and criticality of her mind had devotion to and belief in the health system, operate, health system 
operating within a framework of primary health care, her visionary alignment with the proper principles of public health, and her unwavering desire to contribute on a pro bono basis to the public health design in Pakistan are some of her known credentials. Our, our, our session with Nashtar is you now initiated by shared belief that health development the state's responsibility and its attainment is in, in, intricately linked with the community development and grassroots based social action with public production being a cornerstone to any, any health transformation to reform. We share the vision that health reform stems from an informed political decision and commitment to assign the highest priority to the resolution of social problems in general and health problems in particular. The latter will entail a universal access to the requisite health care services to a well-defined package freely provided to the public, linked to a referral system capable to bridge the gap in service delivery and founded on the principles of equity, social protection, and led by the indispensable unity of health systems, organization, goals, and objectives. Before concluding, I humbly salute this prolific scientist and social advocate of Pakistan. And I hope that her valuable work is effectively utilized and translated into action. And thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bele. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Choked Pipes talks about the roles of the public and private sectors in institutionalizing manual practices, unfortunately. And emphasizes that while money will keep coming in, it will not pay dividends simply because the systems are clogged. I have the honor of inviting Mr. Ajaz Rahim. Ajaz Sahab has served as uh, the Federal Health Minister and the Federal Health Secretary and uh, many major strides that were taken by Pakistan in the area of public health were during his tenure as Federal Health Secretary. Sir. Yassir li amri wahlul uqlatam mil lisani yafqahu qawli Sadaqallahu Mawlana Lazim I was invited yesterday by Dr. Sanya Nishta to come to this function and I immediately agreed to come of course, you will recall, ladies and gentlemen, that when Mark Antony was called overnight to deliver the oration in Rome <laughs> at Caesar's funeral, he said, friend, Roman, and countrymen, let me your ears, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. But I'll be very honest with you, I come to praise, <coughs> I come to praise Dr. <coughs> Sanya Nishta, because I believe that she is the foremost scholar and thinker in the public health sector and allied issues related to the sector in Pakistan. <laughs> the verse that I quoted from the Holy Quran speaks of a prayer to Allah for the ability to speak out the truth boldly but also with skill and with fluency and believe me these are the qualities that I find not only in this particular book but by and large in the writings and cogitations that Dr. Sanya Nishta does in the realm of public health. <clears throat> Dr. Sanya Nishta's scholarship <coughs> reflects both courage of conviction as well as a painstaking ability to marshal evidence, to sift the wheat from the chaff, and to 
have the capability of scanning the global horizon, but at the same time, keeping her feet firmly on home ground. If there were any doubts about her, the quality of her work and publications in the, the earlier books, and I would like to mention Gateway Paper 1, called the Health Systems in Pakistan, and Gateway Paper 2, Health Indicators of Pakistan, the publication of this present book by the Oxford University Press, Choke Pipes, is a resounding proof of her significant contribution to the public health debate in Pakistan. Earlier on receiving the book, I wrote back to her and I said that uh, you have chosen a very apt but also a very powerful symbol of the choked pipes. But believe me, after going through the book, I am not so sure whether the cleansing of the choked pipe is enough in the context of the Pakistani health system or a case has been made out in the book for a total replacement of the piping system. <laughs> <laughs> but the message of the book is very clear, ladies and gentlemen. And the message of the book is that the age of tinkering to attain progress is long gone. It is over. There is a saying that desperate diseases call for desperate remedies. But still I, on balance, believe that you cannot look for mathematical congruence in titles. The truth of the matter is that it is a symbol, and symbol belongs to the realm of poetry, and it's the conception that matters. It is the beauty of the thought that matters, and therefore I still believe that it is an extremely apt and an extremely relevant <coughs> title. Sir, I believe that a good book, a book of abiding value, a book of enduring work, must have three dimensions. First of all, it should contain analysis, but that analysis should not be to the extent of becoming a paralysis. Secondly, there should be synthesis, but that synthesis should not amount to labyrinthesis from the word labyrinth. And the third is that there must be an actionable agenda coming out of a good work without getting into the realm of amorphous rhetoric. And I honestly tell you that if you were to look at these three principles and apply them to this work, then Dr. Sanya Nishtar, you have passed all of the three tests that go into the world. <laughs> But one thing I must tell you that this book is not, that is also very important to tell you. And that is that it is not a book, ladies and gentlemen, that you expect to get the rule of the thumb wisdom. The rule of the thumb wisdom is our pet form of wisdom in our part of the world. And one of the examples, the best examples of the rule of the thumb is that and from the point of view of good governance, if you are looking for merit, then the hundred bricks uh, analogy, that you want to select very good people, so put five or six people in a room, close it, come back, put hundred bricks there also, come back. And if the people are counting the bricks, put them in the account department. <laughs> and if you come back after two or three hours and they are recounting, the bricks put them in the audit department. <laughs> if you come back and you see that the books are helter and the bricks are lying helter skelter, the best thing is to put them in the planning commission of one. <laughs> so there is a better one. That is that if they haven't disturbed the bricks kindly, very affectionately, they haven't disturbed the bricks. But they are cogitating out from the window. Congratulate them and put them in the top management of them. <laughs> you will not find this in the book.